Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Marcel, and I would like to invite you to join us for ACO Movie Night, an open discussion on Saturday, March 24th at 7 p.m., featuring Generation Found, a documentary about an Austin, Texas community working together to find a solution to escalating teen drug abuse. Joining me for Generation Found will be Dr. D. Apple, who recently gave a presentation and discussion about the effects of legalization of marijuana. We thought this movie would be a good follow-up to continue the discussion. So the movie Generation Found is a documentary, and it is a Texas community's response to a growing drug epidemic in their area. You know that saying, just say no? It doesn't work. They, what they created, what they called was a revolution, where they created a community where high school kids coming out of rehab can go back to a safe space, a place that's nurturing and warm and not their old cafeteria where they got the drugs, but they could go to a place that's accepting and open and yet firm, empathic limits, and they can bloom and grow and graduate and get through high school. So it's an amazing movie. So what was your take on it? Well, there was so much going on in that movie. And uh, one of my first reactions was to the idea that just say no doesn't work because it used to work. But I think things are worse now than they used yeah. to be in the early 90s. And so um, because drug use is so widespread now, um, it really takes more than a treatment program or a th even a therapy interaction. It takes a community. It takes yes. a social interaction to uh, really affect what teenagers are going through. Mm -hmm. uh, they're surrounded by people uh, who are using some form of drug at high schools and even before high school. Mm -hmm. So uh, just say no doesn't work anymore. You need more than that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of amazing that these kids had to go through literally the hell they've gone through in terms of drug addiction and were lucky enough to find a community where mm -hmm. that was the emphasis. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, there's 41 mm -hmm. alternative recovery high schools in mm -hmm. the United States right now and there's more planned for the future, uh, which I think is very exciting. Uh, but, you know, to your point, you know, why can't we give children that in elementary school or in high school before they, they end up, uh, you know, abusing substances, drinking, uh, drugs, marijuana? I was really impressed with the movie, and I was, uh, of course, curious because I know you make the choices about the movies mm -hmm. for movie night, and it was a, a really inspirational choice. But how did you come about choosing this particular movie? Well, I, I got an email spam in my email box and I opened it and it the tagline caught my eye something about teen drug abuse and and I watched the trailer to the movie it was totally by accident and a local movie place uh, in my area was was showing a, a private showing you had to buy tickets and I went and I was mesmerized by it, it, it I'd never heard of an alternative recovery high school and the students that I treat, the high school and college students I treat, are very sick, and I didn't know that there were there was this uh, community mm. out there. And I thought, what a need, what a wonderful thing that this this uh, school's done in Texas, and now you know it's been repeated throughout the country, 41 places. So um, that's only in the past 20 years. So as I started educating mm. myself, I said, this is a movie that we have to share with the community. It's important because if I didn't know it, and I, I read stuff like this all the time, if I don't know it, I'll bet a lot of other people don't know about it. Parents, teachers, uh, pastors, you know, uh, churches, um, you know, they're the ones on the front line seeing these kids, cops, you know, uh, community leaders. They're mm. the ones seeing kids dying in car accidents and drug overdoses and they're dropping out of school and teenage pregnancy. So, you know, as we deal with that as mental health professionals, my thought was, let's take a healthy model with this movie and share it. And who knows, if we change one family's life, one child's life, um, it'll be worth it. It's a great idea. Yeah. And it, it really surprised me and got me thinking about the fact that we have whole high schools now dedicated to providing a place for sober and recovering high schoolers. Mm -hmm. um, and I also found myself wondering, how could this model be adapted to other high schools that aren't just for uh, sober and recovering t 
teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a huge need in places like that as well. And all, not all of those children or students are going to end up in treatment programs sure. or in recovery. But uh, I've been thinking a lot about that. How could you adapt the model to provide a place of contact and support and connection and community mm -hmm. for kids that want that and need that? Yeah, it's a great question. I know in colleges there are uh, sober dorms. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some uh, colleges, so once the students get through high school and they've identified that they don't want to use drugs and alcohol, they can apply for the, those special dorms. And there is that community of people yeah. uh, that they can rely on to help them maintain their sobriety. But I think to your point, how do we spread this to many high schools, elementary schools, colleges uh, on a wider basis? Because the, the epidemic is profound. In, in Philadelphia, where mm -hmm. I work, there are 51 opioid-related deaths every month. Wow. That, that's staggering. And that's one city in one state. I know, and just multiply that times 50 states. That's a staggering number. And that's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's teens, young people, and adults. Mm -hmm. But it starts often in high school. And I think the movie addresses the, the social aspect of that, how powerful the, the social group is for teenagers. And there, it's like a, it, it takes on a gravity and it sort of pulls people in, into what's going on within that social group. It's like no kid will admit that uh, there's uh, peer pressure, but there is. You know, there's, there's teen influence on what, what the group is doing is what people are drawn to do. Yeah. And that was one of the amazing things about the movie, about um, these kids have been through all kinds of incredible things, and yet they were finding their way back to simple, sweet, caring relationships yeah. without drugs as a, a substitute. Mm -hmm. for that. It was yeah. very powerful. Yeah. yeah, the teens I treat, many are so miserable. They're just miserable. Mm -hmm. If they can have that warm place, you know, within their family, within the school system, and then they have a chance. You know, they're our future. Yeah, the, the other thing that jumped out at me in the movie was how different the kids and the people were that were involved in yeah. the program. Yeah. Everything from your, you know, kind of uh, typical sweet teenager to kids that had ended up in prison for, yeah. for years yeah. who were clearly hurt by that and damaged and toughened. Mm -hmm. um, and you just wouldn't expect them to be moved by something like this. Mm -hmm. But it, it, I guess it just goes to show that we're all more alike than different, that sure. we all need to feel accepted and to be heard mm -hmm. and to have our feelings listened to and care about, mm -hmm. cared about. And, um, that was one of the more powerful things about the movie was that everybody needs those things in yes. response to it. Even the adults, the staff, I was truly touched by some of the staff stories. Um, all of the staff, uh, it's my understanding that they're all recovered addicts as well. Uh, that some have been sober up to 19 years. So you know, when a student's coming to a teacher, the teacher knows what it's like to go through what that student's going through. So, Did you have the feeling of remembering, I, I had this feeling, wondering if you did as well, remembering while watching the movie, oh yeah, this is why I got into this. This is why I like doing what I do. Yeah. Yeah. And as you go along in your career, you get busier and you get divided and doing a lot of different sure. things and you forget that it's making contact with these people and yeah. working with them that's really special. Yeah. You know? My favorite group to work with is teenagers. Mm -hmm. They're just, because they always surprise you. <laughs> right. And, and when, they, when you can connect with them on a healthier level, it's just, it's amazing. In the movie, there's some social ergonomy uh, principles that are very evident to me. Mm -hmm. And one is the work function that each of the staff members, they have a clear defined role, um, a position and a function within the school. And that clarity allows the students to uh, have a sense of, okay, I know what's coming, I know what's expected of me, uh, whether it's a teacher or the principal or a counselor uh, or even a peer, there's very clear defined uh, places in the school of uh, hmm. what they can access, uh, what they need, uh, whether it's academic or social uh, or emotional. And that clarity, I think, is what helped the students that they probably didn't have that in their traditional high school, but that they did have it at Archway. And I think that's where the, the students were able to grow and, and then have more hope for their future rather than being stuck in, a, in an addiction. So, Yeah, it, it, um, 
the thing that really impressed me about the movie was in their model is they, they've learned the hard way, I guess, like we have, that even if you get someone who's uh, addicted to whatever drugs into a, a treatment program, like a 28 or even 90 day program, they have to come home afterwards. I mean, the inpatient work is the easy part. It's the transition out of the, right. the treatment center back to their old neighborhood, back to their old friends, their old people, places, and things that pulls them back into um, old patterns like this. And so they've created something that goes way beyond that, where they've created a living and growing environment where people can grow up. Mm -hmm. And I remember several of the students there saying, this is my family. Yes. You know, yeah. This is my home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the home is where the heart is. And they really feel uh, understood yes. and cared about there. And that was very impressive. I also found myself translating, you know, into our lingo while they were talking. They talk about being real, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, well, they're sort of dedicated to not relying on substitute contact. What we call substitute right. contact is a way of getting through the day. The, the, the emphasis is on being real. Mm -hmm. And when most people are being real, other people want to be real and we all want a chance to be real where we can, but we're often not in a, uh, an environment, right. a social environment where we can be. We're actually punished for being real mm -hmm. or, or, or not respected. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really interesting mm -hmm. and good. In my mind, the, the function of movie night, it's twofold. One is to start a conversation. And second is about relationships. In movie night, we talk about what matters. And in this movie, what matters is young people who are suffering and a school system found a way to change that, to offer the students something else, a new relationship. And in movie night, you know, having the ability to have a conversation, because we do the movie, then we do a discussion afterwards. Hmm. So what we're hoping is that students, teachers, mothers, fathers, you know, principals might come to our movie night, it's a free event, and that we could start a conversation with the community and invite them to know and, and express their concern and maybe together we can work on helping students um, and develop that relationship you know yeah i like what you said about it movie night we talk about what matters because mm -hmm. it, it's it's like we're trying to create in movie night a similar feeling that they created at, at archway where people can be real yeah. and talk about what they really feel mm -hmm. about things and be emotional even if they're stirred by the movie, mm -hmm. that it's a safe place to talk about mm -hmm. things. I want to thank you for being part of this uh, this movie night. I'm very excited that you're going to be mm. co-discussing with me. Well, thank you for asking me. It's yeah. an area I know we both share interest yeah. in and it's always mm -hmm. fun to work with you. Through our work with our patients, Dr. Apple and I have both seen the terrible effects of alcohol, marijuana, and drug use on young people. There's nothing more amazing than to see a teenager come back to life when given a healthy environment and a healthy relationship to grow in. We hope you'll join us on Saturday, March 24th at 7 p.m. at our Princeton campus for the movie and discussion of Generation Found. For more information and to register for this free event, please visit our website, acomovienight.com.